Hello everybody, what I've got here is an Asus Chromebox M031U desktop mini PC. What I'm going to do is unbox it, see what we get with it when we buy it, and then I'm going to install Kodi on it and turn it into an HTPC. Let's freeze that and have a quick look at the specs. This is the Celeron version with 1.4 GHz Celeron processor, 4 GB of RAM and a 16 GB SSD. Obviously, this comes with Chrome OS on it. We're going to take that off. We're going to install Kodi and turn it into an HTPC. Now, let's just go quickly through the speed it up unboxing. Okay, so inside the box, you get two separate boxes. Okay, this one looks like an accessory box. Yeah, keyboard and mouse peripheral. Okay, it should come with a wireless mouse. Let's have a quick look. Okay, a standard two button wireless mouse um, some batteries that's nice and that's the dongle for the accessories and this little keyboard here should be useful I'll probably use these as my controllers for my HTPC so they'll be useful A wireless keyboard not too bad very nice so this is the box obviously upside down containing the units okay so we get a few manuals here um, doesn't look like we're getting anything terrible great detail here. Really basic stuff. I think if you need more detail, you're going to have to look online. And a how to plug it in guide. There's a Visa bracket. Very nice. You can attach it to the back of your TV or as a stand. And a plastic. Okay, we've got power supply here. This is quite a low power device. 65 watts. It's a 2 amp supply. Okay, so it's not going to be using too much power. And it's got a standard... Um, mains cable for me, obviously, in the UK. Three pin plugs, nice to see. And some attachment screws, I think, for the Visa bracket. This is the unit itself. Okay, it's very small and light in the hand. Okay, we've got uh, a card slot, an on and off switch in the corner there, two USB on three on the front, two on the back, network, HDMI, and display port. There's a headphone socket there as well. Okay, on the bottom, there's not much to see. But obviously, I'm not even going to bother booting this up with Chrome in it. I'm going to get inside, crack open the case. I'm going to make a few slight changes. And then I'm going to start installing Kodi on it to turn it into my HTPC. Okay, so in order to modify my Chromebox, I'm going to be using the guidance online. It's really easy to find. Just go to Google, type in Chromebox Kodi. Click on the top link, okay, and that should take us to the Kodi wiki, I think it is. And there we should find some really clear instructions and guide on to carry the modifications and changes that I'm about to. Um, a really good clear guide on what we're going to do, but basically there are three sequences to it. There's disabling the firmware right protect, putting the unit into developer mode, and performing a factory reset. After the reset, you can put it into developer mode, open up a command prompt, and run a script to basically install your choice of HTTP software. In my case, I'm going to be installing OpenELEC. But I wanted to show you where to find this stuff. So we're going to go back to the Kodi wiki again. Okay, and if you scroll down here, what you'll find is a section where it talks about the script itself. Okay, here we go. So there are some basic instructions here, you know, um, in order to how to run the script and what to do. Um, but... Uh, I would actually recommend, rather than following the instructions solely from here, that you follow the link further below to this detailed forum-based description of how the script works and the sequence of what you need to do, just to make sure that you understand what all of your options are. There's quite a bit of reading involved. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, complexity to it, so it's probably not for the uh, complete novice or faint-hearted. But that being said... It worked beautifully for me, and I didn't really run into any significant problems. Right, the next stage 
is we crack open the box. We do that by taking off the little rubber feet on the bottom and um, removing four screws. The reason that we need to do this is we need to remove a screw which will allow us to remove the firmware right protect. Okay, so I'm using a Stanley knife. Just be careful when you're getting these out that you don't end up cutting yourself. Speed it up a little bit. Okay. Apologies for this nice sunny day. It's not often it happens in the UK, but uh, maybe causing us a little bit of trouble. Now we remove the four screws from the bottom of the case that were underneath the stickers and that will enable us to take the lid off. The case itself is quite difficult to crack open but there's a little trick to this which um, I read on one of the forum threads which is you use one of the screws in the visa bracket mounting holes just a couple of threads and use that to pull the case open as you can see it works beautifully so definitely a good thing to do now we can see inside the case and we have one screw to remove from the firmware right protect and you can see the location of the screw just there where i was pointing Okay, and there you go. That's the screw removed. But that's really all we need to do inside the case. Let's try and zoom in on the location of that screw and see if I can get the camera to focus so you can see exactly where it came from. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, and there you can see the location. There's a kind of like a half moon conductor, bit of solder around a screw hole, and that's where the screw came from. And now what we'll do is we'll put the whole thing back together again, which is the reverse process of what you saw me do when I split the case open. Very straightforward. So I'll speed it up and we'll have it done in no time at all. So four screws back in and little rubber feet back in position. But obviously I did not replace the firmware right protect screw. You can see it on the table there. You just have to check carefully the orientation of the little rubber feet because they aren't all the same size and shape so make sure you get them in the right places. The next step is to insert a paper clip into the hole left of the SD card slot and press the recovery button. Power on the device, remove the paper clip and we should get a recovery screen after we've uh, logged into Chrome OS. Okay, here we go. What we'll do now is a greatly speeded up summary or some screens and video of the installation process. I'm not going to walk it through you step by step. There's a lot of steps to it. It's broken down in great detail and very well in the forum thread that I showed you at the beginning of this video. But it gives you an idea of what kinds of things you're going to be doing along the way. Um, and it shows you an example of what the Easy Setup script menu looks like. And the fact that you can choose between Open Elect or Ubuntu. And um, what kinds of things you're going to be doing. What you're basically doing is getting into developer mode wiping 
the Chromebox Chrome OS off the system, connecting to Google Drive, downloading a script, which then downloads and installs your chosen operating system, in my case, OpenELEC. Script works very well, providing you don't make any mistakes when you type it out, so you need to read carefully what it says on the forum post and make sure you get the uh, text exactly right. I've frozen the screen here just so that you can see what the Easy Setup main menu looks like and how you make your choices. This is the unit uh, in the process of downloading and getting ready to do an install. And this is the menu where I tell the script which version of the Chrome box I've got. Here you see me, my first boot of OpenELEC after a successful install. There are a few options to go through. And obviously you need to connect to your network ultimately. And after a bit more setup configuration, here we are in OpenELEC, which basically the front end of which is Kodi, the very familiar media and HTPC software that many of us use. And as you can see, it's pretty snappy. It runs very nicely. Um, in actual fact, I can tell very little difference performance wise between this and my Core i5 main HTPC I have in the living room. It's uh, very zippy and it responds very well to inputs and instructions as you can see. In my case I have live TV set up via a media portal server. Okay so you can see I've got the uh, channel menu here and I can watch live TV if I want to from the guide. Overall as an HTPC there's not a lot to criticize about this box. It's tiny, it's quiet, its performance is excellent and as you can been through the video with me you can see the install is really not that complicated it just requires an ability to follow instructions and remove some screws so overall a big thumbs up from me okay then i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye bye